Father, for this opportunity to sit under your word, to be taught, to help us to overcome, grow, and have victory in every area of our lives in Jesus' name. We thank and praise you, Father, for the greater one who resides in us. We walk by faith, not by sight, and we believe every need met, every desire fulfilled in our lives. Satan, you're a liar. You, ha liar. you have no authority over our lives. You have no authority over the things that God has promised us in his word. And we stand, hallelujah. And when we've done all we can do to stand, we stand there for knowing that no matter what, we walk by faith, not by sight, seeing the best that God has for us manifested in our lives on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I want you to turn your Bibles to 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 through 15. That's where we're going to start today. 1 John chapter 5, verse 13 through 14. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, uh, 14 through 15. And it reads this way. Now, this is the confidence or faith that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we have asked of him. Amen. So now, in time, uh, in our previous lessons, what we've talked to you about was the powerful uh, results you get from effective prayer, effective, fervent prayer. Hallelujah. That when we pray effectively, fervently, and uh, uh, uh uh, when we pray that way, with that passion, something always happens. That God is looking for those who are passionate about their prayer lives. And so now, with that being said, we started talking to you about some things that were necessary in order to develop that passionate, that effective, that fervent prayer life where God hears and answers your prayer. Now remember also that we are in the night, we are in uh, the on the verge of a corporate mandate to unleash a prayer ministry in this church unparalleled. God told me last October that the first thing he wanted me to do is teach faith. Teach it with a passion. He said the people would get it. Then he told me to go from faith to prayer. Teach them how to pray and give them the individual elements needed for, they, for them to, 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 to uh, master that effective, fervent prayer that they need to master. And so that's why I told you that there are some significant common elements that, that, that were found in episodes of difference-making prayers. Okay, and those, those, ep those episodes of difference-making prayers had certain elements that were always attached to them throughout Scripture. Now, they're on the screen now, now and, and hopefully you can, you can take notes if you haven't been taking notes. The first one was respect, the element of respect. And that's acknowledging God as the loving power that he is. He is Jehovah Jireh, your provider, Jehovah Nisi, your banner. Then I said the second element was that of repentance, making sure you got your act together so that God can always uh, manifest his best in your life without having to go into a, or, 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 or hit, a, hit a wall in your life because of things that you're doing that's not uh, suggestive to manifestation. Number three was revelation, that knowing who you are in Christ is critical and is a, a common element in difference-making prayer. Then the element of reliance. Reliance is submission and dependence solely on God. We know all about this. I've said it twice. I'm not going to get into it any more than that today. Then there's the element of resolve. Yep, an unyielding attitude that comes from prevailing, amen, effective, fervent prayer that is attached to and has got his tentacles in the grace of God for our lives. Then uh, uh, there was the element of rejoicing, where I my um, uh, is an attitude of faith expressing my expectation through the power of praise and thanksgiving. It is awesome what God wants to do in our lives, and I'm excited about praying and getting an answer. I'm excited about 
praying a prayer that makes a difference, not only in my life, but in the life of those in, in whom I contact in prayer or pray for when I go to the throne of God. Now, remember, the excitement comes in prayer. The excitement comes from knowing that prayer gets you actively involved in ensuring a positive outcome to you and your situation, whatever it may be. In other words, to make it simple, when I know when, when I know uh, that I when I pray, something always happens. Hallelujah! That manifests the powers of God. That manifests uh, the presence of God in my situation. Then I'm all out for it. I'm excited about about opening my mouth, communicating with my daddy, knowing, knowing. That whatever I've asked God for is already manifested. Remember 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. You know, that's my favorite verse. It says, now this is the confidence or faith that we have in him, God, that if we ask anything according to his will or his word, he's obligated himself to do what? To hear me. And if I know that he hears me, I know he hears me, hears me because I ask according to his word. Got it? And in faith. So I know he heard me. Because I asked according to his word, using my faith. He's obligated himself to do what then? Hear me. And if I know that he hears me, whatever I ask that aligns itself with his word, he's obligated himself to answer me. Got it? And, the, and, and, and to answer me in the, in the affirmative. Give God a praise for that one. So I got to understand how important it is to, to get excited about prayer. But I can't get excited about something and I don't have all the elements involved in bringing that thing together. So what I've been doing over the last couple of sessions is giving you all these elements that are necessary, not only in personal prayer, but I'm starting to touch upon corporate prayer so that you can have the best that God has for you on a moment-by-moment -moment basis, knowing that when you pick up the phone and call him, it's already done in Jesus' name. And you're confident that he hears you, you're confident that he answers you, and you're confident that, that, that you're walking by faith, not by sight. And that confidence is attached and has its tentacles in the grace or unmerited favor of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So now, I also told you, and this is just a review, I also told you that, that, that our excitement stems from our expectation of the supernatural from prayer. Something supernatural happens every time I pray. Even though I may not see it, something supernatural is going on. I gave you the example of your phone. When, you, when, you, when you're talking on your phone, there are radio, radio or microwaves going all through the air. And if you, know, you got about 4 billion phones just in the world or more plus phones in the world. But you don't see all, all the waves, all the radio waves or the microwaves going through the air. But they're there. You know they're there because somebody's talking to you on the other end. And so in that same regard, I got to understand that when I pray, something's happening. I don't have to see it. I don't have to hear it. I don't have to smell it. I don't, I don't have to touch it. But I know God is busy and it's done in Jesus' name. So we can expect supernatural, the supernatural in our prayer lives, we can expect the supernatural because of the prophetic word of God. Because of the prophetic word of God. That's why I'm sticking with Jubilee. That's what God told me. That was the prophetic word of God. It's, and it's raining out across the body of Christ. I don't care about COVID-19. COVID-19 does not slow down the process of the prophetic in my life and in this church. God has this thing on his, he has it. I don't have to worry about it. He's taking, he's taking care of it. Amen. I'm receiving jubilee. I'm receiving manifestation of that prophetic word, not only in my life, my family's life, but also in this church. Amen. Number two, we expect supernatural because of the proven word of God. That's right. The proven word of God. We expect manifestation. Amen. Then also we expect manifestation uh, and we expect the supernatural because of the promised word of God. The things that God has promised us in the word of God. So our excitement stems from the supernatural that comes from prayer. Hallelujah. Something always happens when I pray. 
Next, uh, our excitement stems from the established spectrum of prayer. It is exciting to be able to talk to God about anything. And then I gave you some, some consciousnesses that you needed to have when you pray. And, you know, just to go over a couple of them, I told you you had to have, uh, uh, you could go to the throne of, of grace, provision conscious, or and also partnership conscious, or in power conscious, parental conscious. There's a certain way that I can go to the word of God, and I can go to the word of God in any one of these consciousness and combine them. But I'm always, I'm always in the face of God with a purpose, to achieve a purpose, hallelujah, because I am a person of purpose, and I'm serving a God of purpose. Amen? And so now, with that being said, there, and I started this last Sunday, but I didn't get to it. There is a passionate <laughs> uh, praying, praying that makes a difference. Passionate praying that makes a difference. Now, remember, I'm telling you, fervent, effective prayer makes a difference. I'm telling you that prayer is exciting, that, that when I know that I'm making a difference when I pray, then prayer for me is an exciting venue. It's, 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 it's fun getting into the presence of God and not wanting to get out. And so now, go to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, because I'm going to give you some examples of passionately making a difference in prayer. Some examples of passionately making a difference in prayer. I thank God that in prayer I create the fruit of my lips. Amen. Now, that you do, uh, chapter 12, excuse me, chapter 6, verse 12 of Hebrews, it says, that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promise or the promises. So I need examples, both historically in God's word and contemporarily, that, that, that have or have had the promises of God working in their lives. I, I need some examples. I need to see this thing being worked out in the lives of those in the word of God. And I need some contemporary examples. And when I get those, then I, I start to passionately want to make a difference because in my prayer life, because if he did it for them, he's got to do it for me. And if I follow the order of God, then my expectation level is, is high and it's, 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 off the chain because I know that I know that I know that I have the answer that I requested from the Lord. And it helped me to create in my life an expectation of God that supersedes any other process in my life. There's nothing like talking to God and having God talk to you. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it in all the world. That's why, why David said, look, Lord, uh, you know, don't take your presence from me. That's why Moses said, look, unless your presence goes with me, I ain't going. There's something contagious about the presence of God. Hallelujah. And so now, in Romans chapter 1, verse 16 through 17, there is a couple other verses I want to call your attention to. It says, for I am not ashamed, verse 16, Romans chapter 1, verse 16, it says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jews first, and also for the Greek. For in it, the righteousness, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. I got it? Is as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. When I become an effective prayer warrior, when when I am fervent about my prayer life when I'm enjoying being in God's presence. Hallelujah. There is more significance and more power attached to the laws than ever before in my life. In other words, I'll always find myself praying for the laws, praying for those who have lost their way, praying for, for the, the, uh, the uh, prodigal son and daughter who have went astray, praying for those who have never seen the light and, and uh, 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 asking God to allow them to see the light in me. 
There's something of a hunger that attaches to your, itself to your life when you start to pray with a passion. Pray with fervency. Pray effective prayer, tapping into that grace that God has given us, hallelujah, to see our prayers answered. Now I want you to turn your Bibles to James chapter 5, verse 16. Hallelujah. We're talking about effective prayer. We're talking about prayers that make a difference. We're talking about fervent prayers, uh, 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 praying with an attitude, an attitude of acceptance, an attitude of reception from the Lord, an attitude of that, that's so, so full of faith that it's almost cocky sometimes, a, 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 a prayer that's confident in the fact that not only does my God hear me, but he also answers me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It says in verse six, uh, verse 16, chapter 5, James, Now I'm going to read it from the Amplified. It says, confess to one another, therefore, your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart, the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its works. Let's, let's, let's read that last part again. The earnest, heartfelt, fervent prayer, continued prayer, effective prayer, of a righteous man or woman makes tremendous power available, dynamic in his workings. I want you to say with this with me. Say, my prayer life is dynamic. Prayer life. Hallelujah. Say it again. Say, my prayer life is dy dynamic. The power of God resides in me. Say it. The power of God resides in me, and my prayer life is dynamic. Hallelujah. Verse 16 says, Elijah was a human being with a nature such as we have, with feelings, affections, and a constitution like ours. In other words, he's saying basically, Elijah is just like you and me, or was just like me and you are. And listen to this, and he prayed earnestly, fervently, effectively, for it not to rain, and no rain fell on the earth for three years and six months oh my god and it was because of his fervency in prayer it's because of his effectiveness in prayer it was because of the grace and power of god working in and through him it was because he knew when he prayed god was not only listening but god was there to answer his prayer and that's 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 the key to prayer so there has to be some elements involved in my prayer life that if I take advantage of, it will effectively change my life forever. And, for the, and it would also change the lives of those who I effectively pray for. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So now, what I would caution you to do is don't make people your source. Never allow a person to be your source. When it comes to laying your petitions before the Lord, now God may raise up somebody with the skill, talent, ability, and resources to help you. But let God do that. Got it? Let God do that. Because fervent prayer <laughs> has to do with boiling over. So when I pray, hallelujah, when I pray fervently and effectively, there's a boiling over process. Hallelujah. Where that, 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 that the results of my prayers boil over into my and cover my life and the life of others. Okay? It's an emotional infusion. It's earnest zeal. And it's me just saying, I believe no matter what I believe. Now I'll go to Mark chapter uh, 2. Got a, some, something for you there today. Now, uh, there was. A story in Mark chapter 2. In fact, I'll turn there myself, of course. Mark chapter 2. We're going to go to verse 1. Uh, this is the story of Jesus entering Capernaum. And some powerful things happened there. Now, I'm going to call your attention to five things. 
Hallelujah. I'm going to call your attention to and go through these five, six things. And so I'm going to give them to you early. They're just, and the, is, each one is just one word. Then later on, I'll start to explain and fill in those words. Got it? The first word is the information. Got it? The first word is the information. The second word is the inspiration. The third word is the interruption. The fourth word is the intimidation. The fifth word is the innovation. The sixth word is the impartation. And the last word is the incredible. And so now all these have to do with this story in Mark chapter 2. Hallelujah. And now you're excited now about getting into it. So we're going to get started. Hallelujah. Now, number one, uh, the information. Now, the four men who brought the pe uh, paralytic to the Lord uh, had heard the healer was back in town. Now, the word had gotten out about Jesus, the word, about the authority, power, and commanding way he taught the word of God. The word had gotten out about how he cast out devils, demons, or unclean spirits as they proclaimed Jesus, the Holy One of God. The word got out about how he touched the hand of Peter's mother-in-law and she was totally healed of a fever in Capernaum. The word got out at evening that the sun, or when the sun had set in Capernaum, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were demon-possessed. I mean, the whole city was gathered at the door of Peter's house. Then he healed all who were sick with various diseases and cast out all demons when he did not allow, and then he did not allow the demons to speak because they knew who he was. Hallelujah. The word had gotten out. The information. The word had gotten out. And on the next morning, after he healed and delivered all these people, on the next morning, he went to a solitary place to pray. Now, <laughs> they heard or got the word that now that uh, Jesus was going to the next towns throughout all Galilee, preaching and casting out devils. You see, the word had gotten out. The word had gotten out about the leper who came to Jesus, kneeling and saying, if you, <laughs> if you are willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus said, I am willing, be cleansed. And the man was instantly healed. Hallelujah. Jesus asked the man not to say anything about being delivered. But the, the, the man couldn't hold it. He told everybody. And so uh, Jesus couldn't get into his, uh, his headquarters at Capernaum. He was in Peter's house, and Peter's house was his headquarters in Capernaum, and he wanted to get there just to get some rest. The Bible says Jesus could no longer openly enter the city, but was outside in desert places. And they came there to him from every direction. So the power of God and the information on who Jesus was, was out there. Am I right? Mm -hmm. And so now the Bible says in Mark chapter two, verse one, that Jesus finally entered Capernaum. He finally got in the house. Hallelujah. So when Jesus was able to get back into Capernaum, he was tired and went to the headquarters they had set up at Peter's house. And there, he healed Peter's mother-in-law. <laughs> huh? And the crowds found out he was at the house. And they showed up with a massive presence. Then, so that's the information. So these four men who had this paralytic heard about Jesus. They got the information. The second thing that was, was that they were inspired. The inspiration was there. The paralytic, hallelujah, the paralytic and his friends 
found out that Jesus was back in town and was at Peter's house. So the second thing on the board should be the, the inspiration. Hallelujah. The inspiration. Hallelujah. So, so they, they, again, the paralytic and his friends found out that Jesus was back in town and was at Peter's house. And they were motivated to work together. Get this? They were motivated to work together. I'm going to say that one more time. They were motivated to work together with a corporate man's spiritual mentality to help a friend. Hallelujah. Can you see where we're going with our prayer ministry here at the church? Yes, yes, yes. Praise the Lord. Then came the interruption. In other words, all those, those, those four men were busy with other things going on in their lives. And so they stopped their scheduled events. They postponed their personal agendas to take purposeful action to get their friend to Jesus. All because of the information, all because the inspiration they had for the, from the information. Now they know in order to process this thing right, there's going to be some interruptions in their, their personal life. Some in, in, <laughs> interruptions in the things they used to do. They wanted to get their friend to Jesus. Hallelujah. Then came the intimidation. That's right. They faced and overcame unexpected obstacles. Now, when they get to Peter's house, the headquarters, they didn't expect these many people here. The crowd, they didn't expect the crowd to be so massive. Mm. Obstacle number one. Number two, they didn't expect the Christ to be so far away that they could barely see him or couldn't see him at all. Hallelujah. So two of their obstacle was, obstacle, obstacles was the crowd and the fact that Christ was too far away. That they could barely see him or couldn't see him at all. Then number three, they did not expect their cries. And those of their friend, the paralytic, to be heard. They were just too far back in the crowd. Hmm. So the crowd, the fact that Christ was too far away, and number three, they didn't expect their cries or their crying out would be heard by the Christ. Then, number four, the innovation. They didn't make excuses, but they improvised for success. They didn't make excuses, but they improvised for success. See, and these are elements of effective prayer. They improvise, improvise for success. They made a divine motivated decision to climb to the roof. Got it? They made a divine motivated position or decision to climb up on the roof. Hallelujah. Next, they made a divine motivated decision to carry their friend with them because they were focused on answered prayer. That's why they were there to help their friend. Number, the next thing was they calculated the location of Jesus in the house and tore away that section of the roof. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So now, <laughs> in improvising, listen to this, in improvising, they were divinely motivated to climb on the roof they were divinely motivated to carry their friend with them to the roof. Hallelujah. And they were uh, divinely uh, uh, motivated to calculate the location of Jesus in the house and tear away that section of the roof. Mm. And then they lowered their friend down into the presence of the Lord. Hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I got, I got excited. They lowered their friend down into the presence of the Christ. Then number five is the impartation. What those four did, plus the man in the, in the bed, because all of them had to have faith. What they did was that they triggered a supernatural response from God Hallelujah. In the presence of the Lord. 
The Bible says Jesus looked up and saw their faith and told the man, your sins are forgiven you. See, because salvation is a full package. It's just not fire insurance designed to keep you out of hell, but it's also has, it also has other benefits attached to it. And one of those, villains, uh, those benefits is being whole or healed. That salvation brings in it, in its package, the power of healing, perseverance, uh, 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 preservation, uh, 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 and many other benefits that come along with salvation. I believe there's, there's at least seven. Deliverance, uh, prosperity. It brings all these things along with it. All these benefits are in the package of salvation. So you're not just buying fire insurance when you give your life to the Lord. God is concerned about how you live right now where you are on this planet. Hallelujah. And so now, <laughs> God is good. Then comes the incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Then comes the incredible. They experienced the move of God like he never before. Jesus said to the paralytic, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And the Bible says in verse 12 of chapter uh, 2 of Mark, it says, immediately he rose, took up the bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. Hallelujah. So now, because of the prayers and actions of these four for a friend, the man was totally healed and they got an, a, a supernatural experience in their life that they had never seen before. That's the power of corporate man prayer. That's the power of corporate man actions. Now think about it. The four and the man on the bed, the paralytic, they did not expect the crowd. They didn't expect the Christ to be so far away. They did not expect Jesus to hear them when they cried out. But because of their perseverance, because of their fervency, because of their, of their effectiveness in prayer, because you don't come all that way with anybody not expecting something to happen. So they're talking this up all the way to Capernaum from wherever they came. Now think about it. So they got a divine, divinely motivated action. They climbed to the roof carry him, the paralytic, with them, okay? Calculate where Jesus was. Then tear that part of the roof off, lower, it down, lower him down to Jesus, and it got Jesus' attention. Jesus saw their faith. Hallelujah. Now, I added this one to it. Last but not least, they had the cash. Because <laughs> they had to pay for the roof, man. They had the cash to pay to get that roof fixed. So now, not only did they invest their time and their talents, they invested their cash to the completion of a most memorable event in that young man's life that was on that pallet. Hallelujah. So now, why are we going through all this? Why are we sharing all these things with you. Well, one of the biggest reasons why is because my goal is to reach a new level of intimacy with God through prayer in this ministry. That, that we're not so concerned about the cars, cribs, clothes, and cash, you know, for us, but we're also concerned about the Christ in us and the Christ in others, okay? And so that's, that's, that's where we're going. And, 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 and I see a move of God like never before. Now, you know, there are people, people are going to be people, okay? Uh, some would turn you in, I mean, tune you in. Some of them, they use this time to go do something else, 
Okay. I, I can't help that. But for those who listen in, for those who hear what thus saith the Lord, you're going to see, I guarantee you, you will see a move of God in your life like never before. Hallelujah. I was always taught this uh, by Mark T. Barclay. I've been taught it by Dad Price. And I think I've heard Hilliard say it, Bishop Hilliard say it a few times, that the church you go to and the pastor that you're under is your main feeder. So everything else is snacks. Well, you know, you get people in this type of, in this frame of, uh, of or area, arena in life, they only want the snacks because they feel like it's that time they can go do something else. But now God's going to, is bringing us all in. God is telling us what he wants done and we're going to do it. And some of them going to lag behind a little bit, but they'll catch up. And we're going to see a move of God like never before in this, in, in, in this ministry. And so I want you to understand how important it is for us, hallelujah, to, to, to understand what God is doing in these last days. I hope this message was a benefit to you. Uh, uh, again, we're trying something new. Uh, I got the screen up there and I got to get used to it also. Uh, but uh, we want you to know how important you are to us here at New Covenant Christian Center. We thank God for your support, your financial support. We thank God for your spiritual support, not only praying for your pastor and first lady, but for the for all your leaders and for the body of Christ here at New Covenant Christian Center and leaders in the body and the body of Christ all over the world. We thank God that we are believing God for an antidote or a serum uh, for the COVID-19 crisis that uh, 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 is going to be over soon in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We're thanking God for the continued financial support that you've given this ministry. It has allowed us to get a lot of things done around here. And last but not least, we, I and Lady G are just, we miss you guys. We really miss you. So when we see anybody, or when I do, uh, uh, you know, I don't want to let you go. I want to talk and talk and talk. But I know, you know we can't we can't do that right now. You know, and we want to hug each other and that kind of thing. Not able to do that. But I want you to know with all my our hearts, me and Lady G's heart, that we love you and we thank God for you. And we believe that New Covenant Christian Center folks are the best in the body of Christ. And all those attached to this program, we give praise and to God for you. We have an internet uh, church now going, and we got people are chiming in, sending their offerings and stuff into this church. And we believe God for the corresponding return on their investment in the kingdom of God here at New Covenant Christian Center. And that they trust the God in me that I will give them a message that will literally transform their lives. Remember, we're here to pray and make a difference. We can pray and make sounds, but we're not here for that. We're here to pray and make a difference in our lives and in your life also. Now, if you're here today and your body's under attack and you're listening or you'll be listening to a program later, I'm here to pray with you and believe God with you for the supernatural in, uh, investment of healing in your life. Remember, we pray and make a difference. So whatever the ailment is, it could be a sore knee, it can be sore shoulders, whatever it may be. It could be sinuses, whatever it may be. We are coming against that now in Jesus' name. We call you healed and whole in the mighty name of Jesus. We do not take ownership of anything that is invading our body. And we thank and praise you that all our organs are now aligning themselves with, your prist with the pristine purity of your word in Jesus' name. And we thank you for divine health and healing now. We receive it by your stripes. We are healed in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And we receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Last but not least, if you're here today and you do not or listening within the uh, uh, framework of my voice and you do not uh, know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I dare not go off without at least extending that invitation to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, God says his word as we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised him from the dead. We shall be saved. Hallelujah. Or will be saved. So, I want you to repeat this with, with me. Those of, you, those of you who do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want you to 
Raise your hands, and I want you to repeat this after me. Say, Father, in the precious name of Jesus, I thank you for giving me your son who, who died and rose again the third day for me. I receive Jesus now as my personal Lord and Savior. I thank you for coming into my heart and baptize me with the precious Holy Spirit and fire. And I can proclaim to the world that I'm now saved, filled with the precious Holy Spirit, and serving you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. Now, if you made that confession for the first time, and you, you believe it in your heart, you're in the kingdom of God. Now, we're on every Wednesday, every Sunday. We want you to tune in so you can learn more of the word that's necessary for you to be live a victorious life in Christ. Now, we're not telling you you're not going to ever have problems. What we're telling you is that God will be with you, help you through them, give you the wisdom, power, and understanding to deal with that thing in a matter where you are victorious in and through it, and then you become a witness for somebody else. Hallelujah. And you'll live, hallelujah, the amazing life in Christ. Amen. And so now, my time is up. No matter what, we walk by faith, not by sight. God bless you. Looking forward to seeing you Sunday at 9 a.m. God bless you.